The shortest path problem is essentially the problem of finding the shortest path between a pair of vertices in a given graph. And normally we assume that the graph is connected so that there is a path and then you just look for the shortest one. And often this problem is stated in terms of a weighted graph and we haven't really looked at edge weighted graphs yet. So let's start by defining an edge weighted graph. Edge weighted graph. So it's basically a graph G together with a function, let's call it alpha, and the function will map the edges of the graph to some numbers. And in this particular um, application, we're going to think of them as positive integers. So that's what this means, positive integers. In fact, the natural numbers is denoted like this. So really this is just the set of all integers including 0 and then all the positive integers like this keeps going. So 0, 1, 2, 3 all the way up to infinity, any one of those numbers gets assigned to each of the edges. So that's what this means and practical example is going to be useful right now. I've prepared a drawing of an example. Here we have it. So we can see that this is a graph on quite a few vertices and what's happened now is that every one of the edges of the graph has been assigned with one of these numbers, one of these natural numbers. So for example, this edge right here we would say has weight 7. The practical aspect of having a weighted edge graph like this is that if you're thinking about this as a transport network where maybe you're delivering goods along roads or something like that, these weights could represent either the distance or the travel expense of a particular road or the rate of flow, the amount of traffic that you were going to encounter. Now if the network, this graph actually represents something like communication network where each of these is either a tower or a computer or something like that and these edges are given weights maybe based on the unreliability of the ability to pass information between two computers or the frequency of action between um, between nodes. All of this is um, possible reasons why we might want to have weights on the graph. Now with the weights on the graph we should be able to define a couple of things. The first thing is that we want to say that the weight of a particular edge is going to be called the length. So if we have um, this function, this weight function applied to a particular edge UV, this is called the length of the edge UV. And if you look at some kind of a path through this graph, let's take a look. Here's a little example. Maybe I'll use um, pink to do this. So we go maybe through uh, starting along here and then maybe to here. Let's just take a look at this path in bright pink. So this path right here, P I'll call it, in bright pink, we can also talk about the weights of a path where we just sum up the weights of the individual edges. So we can actually define alpha of p. So alpha of p is the edge weights of the entire path and that's going to be the sum of all of the weights of the edges where e is an edge in the path p. And this can also be defined for any subgraph. So just notice that for any any subgraph H of G, you could define the weight of that subgraph to be just the sum of the weights in the edges of that subgraph. So the edges and then alpha of that. So this is in general for any subgraph, but usually we're interested in paths like this. So in this particular example, we see that alpha of p is equal to, well, just add them up, we get, um, let's see, 6. 6 is the total weight. And this alpha of p is called the distance of the path. The distance of the path. So, in fact, distance and length have been used before. And if all of the weights in this edge, gra in this edge weighted graph are labeled as a 1, 
then in fact these definitions of length and distance coincide exactly with what we've been thinking of as length and distance before. It's just that now this is a more general version of it where each one of the edges may have a value assigned to it that's bigger than one. So now the point is that for a practical application we're usually interested in finding a path through a graph that has a minimum weight over the entire uh, path. So what we mean is that maybe we want to go from this vertex x over here to this vertex y and we want to do it using a path of minimum weight or in other words minimum distance according to our definition of the edge weighted graph. So you can think of this in terms of having an unweighted graph where all of the edges would just be thought of as having uh, a one as a label and then you can ask that question or we can think about it in the more general form like this which is more practical for applications. So this actual function here that maps our edges to the numbers, the natural numbers, is actually called something special. It is called a weight function. Weight function. So that's what we're going to call alpha and normally we actually talk about the shortest path problem on a connected graph with a weight function. So here we have shortest path problem and we say it is given a connected graph G, so connected graph G with weight function alpha so alpha remember that takes the edge set of the graph and it maps it to the natural numbers so given this we want to find the minimum distance between for a given u and v so for given u and v vertices of the graph we want to know the minimum distance from u to v as a path so that we def we denote like this d sub g with a superscript alpha of u and v. Now this d of g means in the graph g with the weight function alpha of u and v. And we're looking for this minimum amount. So really what that means is that you're looking at all the different paths from u to v and looking at their weights and you want the minimum among all those. So you take the minimum of the weighted paths, so the distances of those weighted paths where the paths are going from u to v. And that's exactly what we're looking for, the minimum weighted distance from u to v in that graph g with the weight function alpha. So this is the shortest path problem and in another video we will take a look at a, at a way, a method for solving this problem.